Can you do me a small favor? I can do you a small favor. Who the hell is Becky? <laughs> the world may never know. <laughs> I mean, I have you, no idea you can, who Becky is. You have no Becky idea. Okay, because fi- no, I'm like five episodes in with you now, and I still did not know who the hell Becky was. Because I, I know you've got Marvel background, and I didn't know if Becky had like some significance or was like <laughs> someone that you've just straight up manufactured. But what I do know is that now our listeners are uh, clued in. So on that note, no, I think we'll just go no. in and say. No. They're not Welcome. supposed to know about Becky. <laughs> oh, but they do now. They know all no. about Becky. They know no, all about know. Becky. Becky, Becky, I am sorry. I spilled the beans on you, Becky. I am not a snitch. I love you, Becky. Becky, don't leave me because of this. We all had imaginary friends growing up. It's okay. But how are oh, you doing today, Gandhi? <laughs> how you doing, man? Am- uh, I'm a little overwhelmed, Becky. Uh, the, the the cat's out the bag, but uh, I'm doing great, man. I'm doing absolutely <laughs> fantastic as usual. Good man. Good. I hope so. I hope so because April's coming, and at least in this game, we have a really interesting two months of material coming out. Whether it be bundles, cards, locations to be announced, like we there's there's going to be some really crazy chaos and i kind of want to touch on it in a way that actually matters to the community which is to talk about how they should invest their time and resources so Uh, i mean one of those yeah it's gonna be one of those but here's the thing it's coming out at the perfect time because we're heading into april and there there's just a lot to prepare for right everyone's talking about the new cards and everyone's on the high evolutionary train and all of these changes that are coming to the game and you know we're now only going to get one free card when april hits and all of this kind of crap and i sat down on friday and realized i have no idea what i want to do because i just spent 6k in tokens and i'm building up starting right now what the hell am i building up for because there's a lot of good series four options also so that's why i i sent you what i did and said pick your best pick your top fives of what you would spend 6k on, what you would spend 3k on in your collector's tokens that is. And then on top of that, for those who are not looking down that path and there are a majority of players in Marvel Snap that are not series 3 complete, you get a free card every month now. Which one are you taking? So, we've each got our tops out there and I think in the no 3K, particular order yeah, for no particular order, I'm I'm gonna go the the further mile though and say I'll I'll say mine in like least important to most important in my opinion of what I would spend my currencies on. But I think the biggest one to note is gonna be the series four because that's that happy little middle ground of like okay, there's a couple. It seems like perma series four, but that's not how they're gonna drop off. But then on the other end, it's like, well, do you just wait the extra two months or do you wait the extra one month or you just say screw it? Do you spend the three k like? What is your philosophy when it comes to the collector's tokens just in general first? And then I'll I'll okay. kind of like dive into mine so that way people don't just, don't just know, oh, you wail on everything. Everyone is a Kermit in my head. So everyone just wails <laughs> and gets everything. <laughs> ah, like that's, how do you spend your tokens? Let's start there. Well, in your head, it might be Kermit. And in mine, it is definitely the Joker. Um, let me be real with everybody first and foremost. I am a massive whale. Do not be like me. Um, I get everything. So, okay. I, albeit, although I am a massive whale, I do have some criteria. Okay. What do I like to play? And how can I add an extra variable into that that is going to be a positive expected value for me and said build that I created? So, Everybody knows that me, I love has Matt, the goddess, has he the baddie. Um, so I base things off of what my interactions are going to be with Luke Cage, with Hazmat, uh, even Shuri, uh, things of that nature, right? 
that's what I go for. I look for how is this going to benefit me, not just in this build, but in future builds and what is coming down the pipeline. That is how I always base all of my purchasing on. What about you? And what the hell did you spend 6K tokens on? Please illuminate me. Master Mold. <laughs> I knew it! Yeah, I, I went in on Master Mold because I'm looking to the future in the sense of me wanting to get more active in tournament play specifically. And yes. I think he has a ton of potential for that, as well as other cards coming in April and or May to be discussed. So for me, I'm pushing on that aspect. I'm pushing on the idea of if I'm going to spend 6K as someone who is not a massive whale, but I will spend, you know, I get the season pass. I get a couple of deals every now and then. Uh, so that means I might spend some in gold to get said deals. Of course, you're doing your daily activities and you're uh, accumulating gold that way, but there's still a dollar investment. I, I, I'll be honest. I'll say I, if I spend $100 a month in total, I would say that's a heavier month for me. Um, in the past few months, some were lighter, some were just barely heavier, but I kind of stick right around there because obviously I have the idea of I'm a content creator and therefore I need to have a certain collection at a certain level and a certain upkeep for deck creation. And But that's my own personal pressure and it's not a pressure that I would ever bestow upon anybody considering how large the free-to-play community is in this game. You do not need to spend, of course, just like any of these mobile games. If you spend, you accelerate. Duh. That's it. And some people spend for cosmetic reasons, and that's absolutely fine. But like if me. you're going to, yeah, exactly. If you are going to spend, though, I want to do it economically. I'm looking from the, let me get the most value for what I am going to look into and say, this is worth it for my roster, because I know we're both obviously Series 3 complete. I was, and typically by the end of the month, so I'm typically Series 4 complete with a couple of Series 5 sprinkled in. Um, I believe you're almost series four complete also. Yes, sort of. Yes. Yeah. Well, almost. almost. I'm not going to spend anything on Stature or Dazzler or Prancer or Vixen. No Comet, no Cupid. You know where this is going. Um, I'm just not going to spend my tokens on that. Not at this moment. Now, is Stature going to be okay? Well, is she okay? Yeah, she, she's great for, you know, a multitude of different reasons, but just not for me and the builds that I create. So I guess the way I, I, I want to look at it is, like I said, you know, if you've got collector's tokens to spend, there's a lot of really cool cards, really fun cards that are up and coming. So I think the happy mix in the middle of what we have right now versus what just came out now kind of defines the series four conversation of should you spend 3k at all on any card or should you just either wait the two months if it after its premiere in this current system which i mean let's be honest is um not ideal that everything is 6k upon release it's not ideal no not um, ideal at all it, it that's the I'm, I'm gonna take the pc route on that one and say it's not ideal um, but if that's the case, do you spend 3k at all or do you spend 6k or nothing? And I kind of sat on this back and forth and back and forth because you have the ideas of the big bads, right? Where they're going to be perma yeah. series five. They're always going to be 6k. And in general, as a rule of thumb, I'm going to say those are probably more often than not the top priority cards when it comes to what is your collector to uh, tokens going to bring you value? Like you're not, they're not depreciating over time because they're going to get cheaper or you're going to get the item free later or no matter what, it, it's always a good investment when you're looking at the rarity for, and the acquisition. But on the other end of it, some of them are just kind of necessary to have as soon as you can. So it, are you spending anything on series fours is the first question ever, ever, ever. Ever. You ever spend 3K? <laughs> you ever spend 3K on a card? I have, I have never spent 3K on a card. Okay. 
Why? Me personally. The reason why is because I already have them. Guys, when I say I am a whale, I get the things that I want and the things that I don't want, I don't want. Okay. Um, so like, for example, like I said, stature, I don't care for Thanos. Hot take. I don't care for Galactus. I have one. I pulled one. I didn't, I didn't, did not care for it. You no. pulled Galactus out of a cache? I do believe so. Yes. You turd. Ta-da. <laughs> <laughs> I what is that like null. buyer's compensation reward? Thank you for spending <laughs> dollars in this game. Here's a free Galactus. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, and when I pulled it, I was kind of like, I was disappointed. It wasn't the card that I wanted. <laughs> I know. I you don't are use not it. allowed to be disappointed on a free Galactus. You know what that just did? That just bought Becky a bracelet. That's all that did for you is you <laughs> finally can spend something Becky. on this beautiful lady that you've dreamt up and you can now accessorize her because the oh. game decided to accessorize your account for free. Ass hole. Uh, well, wow. Look, it's just, it is what it is. I mean, I was happier pulling something else than any of the big baddies. I don't really care for the big baddies. Yeah. I mean, they're big and bad, but uh, I care for, you know, the lesser ones that actually create to something bigger than a baddie. Like a like master mold. Hey. Uh, no, sorry. Hey. Uh, like, I, 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 okay. Hot take. I love master mold. Guys, if you have not gotten your master mold, uh, I'm letting you know I'm, I've been running master mold since he came out, and I am so in love. He's <laughs> so fun. In love. He's master. fun. Hello. There's a clog deck I'm working on, <laughs> ideally for the, the next couple of streams, if I can just tweak it down the way I like it. Um, I'm working on a couple right now with Master Bolt, but we'll, we'll, he'll be, he might be his own conversation because I truly do think he is a tournament play that will completely take people by surprise because you don't think a Sentinel is annoying until it's really, really annoying. So annoying. We'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Um, yes. So let's continue on the series four, though. Okay. So, okay. Shoot at me. What are you spending 3K on? Whether it be immediately right now, 3K next month, or even waiting until May for something that just recently dropped down into 3K. So it might be 6K right now, like stature is, but then come May, stature is going to be 3K. I know you ain't spending okay. it on her. No. Um, okay. Here's a hot take. Here, here's a good one. You're full uh, of those today, Shana? aren't you? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So if we're looking into the future, guys, uh, and if we are looking into right now, if you've been playing Marvel Snap for a while, or if you have not, Bounce is not only incredibly fun, incredibly cerebral, incredibly hard, but it is so satisfying and it's so good. Guys, I am immediately going to say Shauna. The reason why is because add a random one cost card to each location of which can not only be bounced. You're, 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 there's three different things happening when Shauna pops out like Jack in the Box. Plus, she's the four cost, so Zabu, hello, okay? But when you throw her out there, there's three different one cost cards that not only can you bounce back with beast but you can also bounce all back into your into your hand vis-a-vis -vis falcon and in tandem with angela and all these other wonderful pull one pull two pull three cards i mean this becomes absolutely stupid overpowered and just i i have to do it you're gonna hear me do that a lot today you're so gonna hear this a lot from me guys so in my opinion she is worth 3k period she is worth now remember wow. this is not in any particular order okay this is not in any particular order i am also going to throw shuri out there for obvious reasons, Shuri was untouched, unscathed by the last nerf round. And Shuri should be, I'm just, I'm going to throw this out there. It should be probably number one, but I digress. You've heard of Shuri. We all know about Shuri. Great. Awesome. Wonderful. 
I'm going to go a little off the beaten path. And there are three other different reasons why I would pull these. Valkyrie is one of those cards. Valk is so underrated in my opinion. I know that a lot of people have not used her, but she is, she's really that good. She is really that good. Yeah, yes. Of course, she's not going to destroy your, yeah. I, 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 she's not going to help you on, you know, the, the devil dinos and, and, and things of that nature with the ongoing, but everything else, this girl has it in spades. And she's a five cost, but like I'm trying to tell you, in tandem with another card that I really want to talk to you guys about very shortly, I'm hoping. Um, Valk should just be one of those cards that you have in your roster, period. Um, the next card that I'm going to throw out there, remember, these aren't in any particular order, but Bast. Bast, 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 Bibbity Bast, okay? 3K Bast on Bast. Is, uh, yeah, I would say that. Yeah. All right. Let me let me spill some beans for you guys right now. One of my favorite builds in the game. I don't know if anybody else is using it, but what I like to use. When's the last time you saw Adam Warlock? Prevalent. Yeah. Not too many mm -hmm. people use him. I use him religiously, and Bast allows me so much flexibility just yeah. with that interaction alone. Ironheart. Just that interaction alone. Uh, you guessed it. It's demon time. The hood is coming out. Oh, yeah. Plus three. I mean, that's such a beautiful swing. That is such a... More people need to be hip to Bast. Bast is really one of those cards that I think is so underutilized. It, it, it meshes with so many other cards. Bast. And last but not least that I'm going to throw out there try to throw some curveballs for you guys, but um, is a card that is not even a release yet, and that is going to be Kitty Pride. You're having people wait. Your advice, I should say, is to wait on Kitty Pride for, you know, May, when she drops, and spend 3K yes. on Kitty Pride. Yes. The why? reason why I'm going to say, well, because she's not worth six. She might be eventually, I mean, depending on how, uh, how great she's going to be in the bounce decks, I, I have a big feeling she's going to be great in the bounce decks. Um, but when I have already thrown out Shauna, when I have already thrown out Bast, and there's a multitude of different mm -hmm. cards that uh, can be bounced, I'm trying to tell you that Kitty Pride will be worth three, but not six. Because there's okay. other cards that you can use in tandem with that bounce deck. Now, is she going to be amazing? Uh, yeah, I, I think she's going to be amazing. Hmm. But okay. she's, I don't think she's going to be worth six. Okay. Uh, couple, couple of thoughts. Okay. First off, yeah. I agree when it comes to Kitty Pride. I actually have her as my number one 3K target. I just wanted to see what you were ah. going to pull out there. Uh, I have her as my number one 3K target right now because I think that Kitty Pride is going to be a great card. However, based on the amount of time that you also have access to said card, I think that does also weigh into the value of what 6K is. Typically, you want to spend 6K in the very beginning of the drop series versus the very end of the drop series. You're going to get a couple extra weeks in that value and Kitty Pride's coming out at the end of the month. So versus something that happened in the second week or even the third week, you got more time on that value. So for that mathematical uh, economic reason, that's one push. The second one is I do think that, you know, bounce is going to have this giant, tremendous epicness coming to it. We're already starting to see it with negatives in waves at the moment and beast is slowly shooting up as one of the most important cards to have both in a tournament scene and in a ladder scene right now due to the ease of scalability and the ability to drop down cost and magic. So that is like tremendous double time, huge. 
So I believe that Kitty Pride is going to have a value. I just do not think that value is like, like you said, it is not worth 6K. I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be niche. And I disagree with several of the content creators that are stating that Kitty Pride is going to rival Sunspot when it comes to the, you only get one, one drop. What are you putting in your deck? Nine times out of 10, people are going to lean immediately towards Sunspot because it's something that scales over time. I think Sunspot is something that, if anything, is still too strong. It needs to be nerfed. And Kitty Pride has the potential to go against it. I just don't think it's of that meta ness value. Um, at 3K, I had a really tough time trying to justify to myself several options that I think would be still relevant and would be really good continuously at saying I spent 3K on getting this earlier a month in advance or even two months in advance if it just happens to like, boom, it just dropped, boom, spend 3K on it, you had it pinned in your store. Um, Darkhawk makes that list for me. I still think that his deck and his usage is strong enough to say, I want this as soon as possible in the roster. I want this in the on the battlefield. It's an ongoing, so you can always, you know, fill, and there's going to be more and more cards that will obviously fill up rocks and decks and hands and all these other things. It, it will be a card that will continue to grow and is something that will get you to climb quickly. I just can't say, wait on that one. It's one that I kind of felt like is worth it a little bit more. To accelerate, I was fine with it accelerating. Um, but after that, I'm like, well, Sauron's going to drop eventually, and we still may see changes to the Red Skull deck. So I, I'm I'm on the fence, but that's like a bottom option. Zabu is maybe the first time I'd ever say if you didn't get it in the season pass, sure, spend 3K in tokens to get it sooner, but only in the right deck construction, and that's even pushing it. So then the last one I'm going to throw in there is your new favorite toy, Negasonic Teenage <laughs> Warhead. Because <laughs> another one in a Destroy-style deck and as a three-cost, in my opinion, almost equivalent to a Shang-Chi, is going to be a consistently strong card. No matter what type of deck you put it in, in a Destroy deck, in a Galactus deck, as just a standard tech card on turn six, depending on if you can control the priority, like there's a lot of good things that can come from that. So I'm I'm back a lot. and forth on it. Um, I could make the argument that, you know, the NTW should come into 6K, but there are just too many good 6Ks and I only wanted to have five. Uh, that would be worth 6,000 collector's tokens. Um, but before we look at like the heavy expenditure, ooh, before that, yeah, I, I know I'm going, I'm switching it up. Um, it's called an audible. Uh, I want to visit the Valkyrie point on your All end right. too, because Valk, I think, should be a free card. I wouldn't accelerate Valk. And okay. with Valk dropping so soon like she's only a couple of weeks away technically from being potentially again all of this is subject to change we may end up having some perma series fours maybe which honestly i think would be healthy for the game um I agree. but if she drops to series three i'm putting her in that list i'm also putting shuri there i'm gonna tell people don't accelerate shuri because of all of the reasons I talked about in the last episode, where I think that we're not done with the Shuri conversation from the devs. I know the community is okay. not done with it. I mean, I'm, to be blatantly honest, I'm fucking tired of dealing with it because it's a card <laughs> that needs to be, I'm sorry, it needs to be addressed. It's a card that needs to be further worked on. And because it's on that, you know, hot seat, using collector's tokens to get it and then watch it within two weeks or so potentially get nerfed further. I had that happen. I had, I got dark Hawk at six K six K and two damn days later, they dropped <laughs> two days, down yeah. two days. They dropped yeah. his power 
and then Zabu at the same time. It was like, ah, and I just don't want you to go through that as a community. And I think that's what's going to happen with Shuri. I think that Shuri makes no sense to spend any collector's tokens on. Just wait. There are other mechanics that now we're discovering that will get around the Red Skull Shuri decks more consistently. Don't spend any collector tokens on Shuri, but she's like my number five option for getting for free. So I said my Valk pick. I said my Shuri pick. Who are your top five? If you get one free card, if you're not serious three complete, what are the That's cards easy. that you would say, get these cards if you don't have them? Um, oh, this is out so of those easy. picks. Go. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the jury, Becky, if you're listening, um, she's not Luke Cage. Luke mother for and Cage. Why am I saying Luke Cage? That just sounds silly, doesn't it? It sounds yeah. almost absurd. Mildly. Almost absurd. Okay. High evolutionary. Coming out very soon. And a lot of people are going to be gunning for high evolutionary. If you do not have yourself a Luke Cage, you will be in such a fit of rage. Bars. I am letting you know right now that Luke Cage is so good. Why? Works in tandem with Valkyrie. Oh, wait, does it? Yes, Becky, it does. What else does? Why, 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 okay, for the people who really desperately need to know, well, Cam, why does Valk and Luke Cage work amazingly well together? Why does all these other cards have such an effect or negative effect or not an effect at all with Luke Cage? Luke Cage negates all of your opponent trying to Scorpion you, trying to Valk you, trying to uh, high evolutionary you, trying to hazmat you. Uh, location, location, location you. Um, it allows your Cerebro to do exactly what Cerebro wants to do. It, it allows so much flexibility with your cards not being touched. If you can't touch my card and I am buffing up said card, what are you going to do? There's only a couple of things that you can do. So number one on my list is Luke Cage because Hazmat is becoming such a wonderful addition to so many other people's decks that they're finally understanding that Hazmat is uh, Hazzy the baddie. Sorry, Becky. She's a baddie. What can I say? Hazmat alone is scary. But then you have all these other cards that are coming out that negatively affect your build. So Luke Cage, one. I'm going to make another little audible, and I think this is very, very, very important. I think right now in the new meta that's coming out with High Evolutionary, with all these other wonderful cards that are coming out, I am also going to say Super Scroll. Yes, I said it. Super Scroll. Yes! <laughs> Super Scroll is your backup to all the stuff that you... Look, look, you see that they have that Wong? Oh, that's beautiful. Super Scroll is absolutely... You ever see those shiny toys that are played over there and you're just like, damn, I wish I had one of the mother for alligators. You throw down the scroll, you put a little super fire on it, and now you got one. You got a Wong? Great. You've got a DD, Devil Dino. Oh! Thank you for that devil dino. That devil dino was accompanied with a, you know what, a, a mystique. You, it's all in one. Let's have two. No, 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 no. But wait, all those Mr. Fantastics, great. All those wonderful, crazy uh, cards that, you know, claw. All those wonderful, you get it all. You get it all. Now, are there some bad stuff to that yeah if i throw down a you know let's say an electro yeah you're gonna eat that okay you're gonna eat that and it's gonna suck but i mean somebody throws down a a typhoid mary and tries to 
you're going to eat that. Yeah. Yeah. There's pros and cons to everything, but super scroll is going to be very important in the upcoming meta guys. It's going to have its shine. Now, I'm going to throw out there another card. And I'm going to say, this card I've already said. This is how high up and mighty I am on this card, guys. If it's not Luke Cage, if it's not Super Scroll, I'm going to say Bast again. Bast. Yeah. Yeah, I'm throwing it out there again. I told you the reasons why last time, but I'm going to tell you again. Okay. Bounce decks are amazing. Not only are bounce decks amazing, but it doesn't have to just be bounce decks. I'm not playing a bounce deck right now, guys. I'm not. But what I am playing is a lot of on reveal cards that uh, have mediocre stats. If they had plus three, oh, baby, it would be amazing. And if you did the same, it's, it's a lot of upside. Which also okay. feeds right back into my Luke Cage because if you right. throw that bast out there and you you happen to have Odin in your hand too, it goes right back to right back to being that eight power. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, it's just stupid. these cards in tandem. It just gets stupid. It gets All stupid. Right. The Super Scroll pick I like a lot. Like I really like a lot, especially with High Evolutionary coming down the pipeline. Thousand percent on board with that. Mm -hmm. Bast, I think, is a little select um, for the same reason I have one of my picks. Um, but I, the way I guess I, I kind of look at it is I'm thinking from the, the direction I'm looking in, I should say, is, okay, you're not Series 3 complete, and there's specific cards that are just very staple, we'll call it, cards that you need to have in your roster, right? Whether they're ones that are about to drop into Series 3 next month, potentially like Super Scroll, or ones that have been around for since beta as Series 3 cards. For example, I think one of the most important cards in the game, at, at least to me, because so many decks have such depth the second you add it, is going to be Sarah. I think Sarah oh, is a just a core card that automatically can transform an entire deck. The idea of knowing that goddess. you can do Iron Man into Mystique, for example, on turn six is a huge swing if you've built up in, in two lanes already prior to that. You know, your Silver Surfer decks all of a sudden have a new depth on that final turn. Cerebro even gets a little bit of love if you, if you haven't been testing Cerebro three and four recently. It's surprisingly smooth in a Sarah deck. Like there's so much that she brings just by dropping it down just one for that final turn. Or if you have any other mechanic to try to get her out earlier, you know, the list goes on. I mean, she's just such a core piece to making a deck go from good to great that I'd say that if you don't have her yet and you have a free card to get, she's probably going to be one of the top. She's my number one choice overall is to get she Sarah be. specifically. She's great. Um, on top of that, for those that are looking to climb, those who are looking to try to say, I need a deck that's going to get me to infinite for the first time, and you're not Series 3 complete, the card that will make your Series 1 specifically and Series 2 cards shine is going to be Patriot because I've just started referring to Patriot as Old Faithful. Because he really is. All you need to make a Patriot deck run is all of the stuff you got in Series 1 that had no abilities, that had no value whatsoever, except for a Patriot deck, really. Let's be completely honest. Then add in a tech card or two, and then one of the six drop options, whether it's Onslaught, uh, Doctor Doom, or Ultron. Pick your build. And you can customize it, and that'll be a deck that can get you not just to infinite, but way past it as well, which we have proof of that, that it consistently does. Patriot is its own deck style, and it made me even think about Mystique of, should I put Mystique in this list? And 
I decided to not put Mystique in the top five, even though a lot of people will, because you can still run a deck without that card. Patriot can be run in a Kazar format, in a Blue Marvel Onslaught format, and still be successful. Mystique brings it that extra level up, but it's not one that I'd say is as 911 as as we head into the next era of this game, as Shuri, as Valkyrie also bring to the table, which then leaves me with one last card. We've got Sarah, we've got Patriot, we've got Valkyrie, we've got Shuri, and then one other card. And it's a nerfed card. Because it's still just that damn good. Because it's another card that will always be able to be a flex spot. And it's not America Chavez. But it's just as flex. Even though America Chavez is Series 1. You get the idea. It's still She-Hulk. She-Hulk is still a card that you can throw into almost any deck. And it will be successful. Because... You get bad draws all of a sudden. Oh, don't worry. I still have a She-Hulk. I can still drop nine power. Or you can build strategies around it, obviously, with magic and infinite and, you know, death and all these other mechanics, right? There's so many ways to play a She-Hulk that it's just, I need a good card to round out this blank deck that I have, this discard deck that I have, this on reveal deck that I have, this Zola deck, this destru- it all works with She-Hulk. She's probably the most plug-and-play overall card in the game right now. Probably over Sunspot, in my opinion. Most flexible card in the game. Great power. Even at 9, even still shang chi Still, still, still solid. So th- that's, that's why I think, at least in Series 3, there are some really solid options. And I like that you... You're more... Uh, you're looking to who you're about to battle in April and May, and I'm looking in the sense of like, oh shit, what am I missing? So between the two of us, I think they're really good lists to say, yeah. if you're getting ready for Series 3 and you want to round out this deck or you want to get ready to battle this kind of battle, you know, depending on how Series 3 complete you are, you could be someone that's got two Series 3 cards or you could be missing two Series 3 cards. They're completely different battle lists, and we did not plan that. And I am no. completely okay with that. So, because we're both seriously complete, but I, we just had completely different views on, on this shit, which is kind of why I like you, because you're weird. Oh, you well, go the other you. way. You're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. I, I, I um, on that note. Yeah, well, I mean, because I'm... Oh, go ahead. Okay, let, let's, let, let's be real. Guys, I am in this for PvP. I am in this... Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, I love my variants. Yes, I love my variants. Uh, that that's part of the aspect of the game but i want to be one of the best players in the game let's just be real um and when that actually you know matters like like actual leaderboards or something that that you can actually flex on not just saying hey i made it to 600 with a whole bunch of bots around that that that's to me that's when it really matters and that's why i'm always looking ahead and that's on honestly it's it's kind of sucks because i never have my head on a swivel I'm only looking straight ahead and I'm tunnel vision. Hey, how is this going to get me the most value while I'm playing these guys who are playing the meta? Right. I'm more like the anti-meta person. Yeah, it's just kind of weird. So if you're anti-meta, since we're about to talk of the Series 5 cards, right? Yeah. About who's who's worth 6K. You know, whether it's the current big bads, the ones that just came out this month, next month, or will come out in May. You know, that's a it's a pretty substantial list of really cool, awesome cards coming down the pipeline. Let's just get the big bads out of the way, because I said only pick five that you're spending six K on. So if you've saved up or you've taken advantage of Token Tuesday out the wazoo or the whatever it is, right? (laughs) How many of the top five in your mind are big bads? And why is it not Kang? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> How did you know I didn't have King as a big? That's because crazy. I, because I didn't either. It's just I can't. Like I love that I have him, <laughs> but I he's not worth six k. Not yet. We haven't no, gotten not yet. this. But this could be the Thanos effect all over again. Where the first month, so many people were like, "Oh, Thanos isn't good." And okay, I mean, I had Thanos A1. It could this be that 
for even us? No, no. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, since okay, we're going on a freaking tangent for just one moment, guys. That's um, the point. Uh, yes, 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 <laughs> yes. But uh, just just a small tangent. Kang yeah. is not a big baddie. He's not. But what he is is control, control, control over the tournament scene. Why am I saying over the tournament scene? I have done numerous battles. All I am is going on this Snapchat, Discord, and, and, and hey, throw out a battle here, throw out a battle here. Hey, 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 hey. I'm trying to tell you that when it's in a battle mode, when you're playing your friends or enemies, whichever, don't discriminate. When you snap, th there is real reason for that person to run away. Even though your snap means absolutely nothing because you have a Kang. It is so crazy. The first couple matches when you don't show a Kang, because you're snapping indicating that you have, I got it, homie. I got it. Becky in the background, don't tell my card. I got it. So when you, you basically, it's a bluff and it is absolutely powerful when it comes to the tournament scene. And that's why um, I'm ha not only happy that I have a king, but I find him rather useful. Now, if I'm going up on the ladder, not so much. I mean, yes, uh, it's, it still applies, but nobody cares. Uh oh, you snap. You, I'm a snap too. It doesn't have the weight in yeah. tournament play. It has su it's such a weight. Okay. It is such a good card. But other than that, 3k you know 3k but okay guys the one i am most excited about not even just excited this one i i, I think if it's not if it's not touched okay if it's not touched high evolutionary high evolutionary high evolutionary forget thanos forget galactus forget yeah. All these other baddies that you think are baddies because High Evolutionary is here. He's here to stay and he's going to destroy everything else. Hulk, smash. Abomination, no longer trash. Eh, it wasn't really trash anyways, but not trash. Um, <laughs> all of these cards that were just, yeah. just, just laying there all of a sudden have these attributes that are just like mind-boggling. Guys, High Evolutionary. Forget Thanos, forget Galactus. Um, Living Tribunal, very, very excited about. But forget Living Tribunal who? Um, the only other card that I see as something that I'm going to spend my 6000 on. Uh-oh. Um, and I'm letting you know that I will have this card when it drops in tandem with whenever high evolutionary i'll pay whatever howard the duck howard the duck is going yes. to be my friend yes and um ongoing tap this to see the top card of your deck i'm trying to tell you i have said this before in tandem with i i i play a lot of weird cards. Um, Adam Warlock is one of them. And Howard the Duck is essentially, he, he just gets things done, just like my Adam Warlock. And I'm so excited. <laughs> Please, uh, guess, yeah. tell me what you, well, tell me what your selection is, because I, those are the only two. <sighs> I, I can't really justify. The others? You I can't? can't justify a living tribunal. I, I can't do right. it. I, I, I can't, can't justify it either. I am very excited for it. I think it's got a lot of potential. A lot of potential. Um, and mainly with the ones that also spread their resources, like Omega Red. I want to see how that Omega Red piece is going to like spread its power by doing that. So does it mix it all together and still spread? Or does it mix it all together and then spread? Like, there's lots of little in, in, in little pieces in there, but I'm 100% on board with you with Howard the Duck because Thanos, in my opinion, obviously is a big baddie. He's still worth it at 6K because he's his own deck style. Galactus, the exact same way. He's worth it at 6K because he's his own deck style. Kang, as a plug-and-play card, I see what you're saying with the tournament scene, but I think 
We just need, in general, more time to see that become relevant. And we maybe will see that in Conquest. Maybe once Conquest drops with this now ladder type leaderboarding of this type of effect, then it'll be worth something. But until then, I, I can't justify Kang. But this duck. This is a nice. <laughs> this is a nice duck. I am a big fan of this idea of being able to have foresight. Foresight into it. And there's a very weird reason why. Very weird reason, reason why. And it has to do with Jubilee. Have you ever noticed how many times Jubilee will specifically pull America Chavez? Exactly. It happens a lot. And so much so that I think, keyword, I think it'll be interesting to see if Howard the Duck reveals something about this game that the developers haven't thought about yet, which is the how does Chavez become that turn six pull guarantee. I think that's going to be a big piece specifically with Howard the Duck. So it, it might be a little revealing, especially if it bugs with America Chavez. So that oh, I'm very interested in seeing. I, it'll be great to see. Because it'll give us insight to some of the early other mechanics of the game. But outside of Howard the Duck, I would also asterisk that if you get Howard the Duck, have the foresight to get ready for Iron Lad as well. Yes. Oh. Whether, it, whether it be you're a whale and you get both, or you get Howard the Duck and then get Iron Lad at 3K in the future, I think that that combo of seeing and then what people aren't recognizing with Iron Lad, including a very specific top content creator, Iron Lad, it specifically says, copy the text of your deck's top card. Not copy the effect. Because an effect would only be labeling on reveal or ongoing. And this is text. So something like an Adam Warlock, for example, where it says an effect on it, but it's not on review. It's just a stagnant static effect. The fact that Iron Lad will copy that makes it very interesting. Because then I start thinking Galactus as well. Yeah, I knew you were going to say it. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, so I why would you tell people that? <laughs> Because it's coming. And I want to be the first one to say this was a good idea publicly. But <laughs> I do think it's going to be. Because imagine that. That's a four power Galactus without needing. Yeah, I know. Sorry, a uh, four cost Galactus without needing Wave or Electro and Friends. Like, just know when it's coming. Then boom, Iron Lad. Like, and you could do it on turn three under Zabu. Like, there's so much that you can it's do so with this. Up. It's As so an effect, up. not just on reveals or ongoings, anything. It's a very wild card. So I think Howard the Duck and Iron Lad, I kind of, I lumped them together as one because the synergy is just stronger than possibly other tournament plays that will come to be. Uh, I'm with you with High Evolutionary as well. 100%. I think High Evolutionary is going to yeah. also change, in, in, like Thanos did and like Galactus did, it will create its own deck style. And there will be versions that focus just like how Patriot decks work. Some will focus exclusively in one style, and then you'll do the partials that are focusing on the one, three, and five power cards, and then the other partials that'll focus on the two, four, and six power cards. It'll be a great, great community in that week specifically, because we're all going to have so many unique takes on the high evolutionary. And for me, is probably my number one what I'm saving up for pick. The last one, though, just to round it off, even while I'm still in testing for it, I do think that Master Mold is worth 6K if you're in the immediate current tournament scene. Immediate current tournament scene. Wow. I think that it is relevant right now because of a deck that I'm in the middle of tweaking, which is focusing on in tournament play 
clogging your opponent. And I think that those control decks in tournament are so important. So you're looking at a hazmat type build. You're looking at a debris and a viper and all this kind of stuff that just clogs everything on the play and in your hand. So not only can you not put cards down, you can't put relevant cards down because there's limited space on the board in addition to limited space in your hand. <laughs> So you can't progress through the different mechanics you have unless if you started with it in basically turn two. So I think that there's a lot coming with Master Mold in particular. I think he's worth the 6K. I have absolutely enjoyed using him already and seeing the gameplay that's out there. I disagree with several other content creators that he's just a meh card. I think he's a Thanos so in that disagree. aspect. I think he's a Thanos hey. in that aspect that you haven't unlocked his true potential yet. That doesn't mean he's going to be a top 10 card, but I think in the current relevant play, he is a very good card and is worth your value. That's why I say wait on Negasonic Teenage Warrior and then go ahead and use your 6K on Master Mold if you're tournament relevant at the current moment. Master Mold is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I got him on, I think, day one or day two. I, I forget. I sent it to you, but one of the, Toledo. Yeah. One of the, one of yeah. the two, it doesn't matter. I'm trying to tell you guys, master mold has been such a luxury to have in my deck, especially the way that I have my build set up with hazmat. Um, and w when you also give them cards and then scorpion and make those cards, less, <laughs> that also is absolutely hilarious. Yeah. Um, and yes, Master Mold, uh, you could take it from both of us, uh, who are content creators who are also, you know, really competitive. Master Mold is absolutely amazing. Amazing. You will have he's, a he's, lot of success and fun with him. Yeah. Uh, the success and the fun part of knowing, haha, oh, you didn't play anything on turn one, and I had Master Mold in my hand for turn two. I'm snapping. Yes. If you don't drop anything it's on turn one, I'm immediately clogging your hand where you're going to have from that moment on turns three forward. You will always have a full hand and you have no choice but to play cards. You have <laughs> no choice. So beautiful. It's so I'll beautiful. leave you with this on on the 6K expenditure with Than like again, mine are Thanos, Galactus, High Evolutionary, Master Mold and Howard the Duck. And I'll put an asterisk on Iron Lad specifically because I think that synergy right there is just there's just too much, too, too much good. good coming from that combo in particular and it's going to be an expensive combo so you got to get one now and one later i'd say get howard the duck now and get iron lad later um spending 6k is no light feat you know the math has been done if you want to get a 6k card you're going to get maybe one a, a month you make any investment into the game that's more than a season pass you're going to get two if you're really on top of it, if you really push and put a little further investment, put like up to $100, you could maybe get three. Maybe. Kind of. Maybe. Kind of. <laughs> maybe. Kinda. And that's You'd with have to have really offers. Good pulls. <laughs> and that's exactly. That's like with offers. You'll uh, Under $100, you could maybe get three. And then you'll spend over another $200 to get to four. And that's just insane. So you got to be smart when you're using your collector's tokens. As a rule of thumb, yeah, 6K or bust, I think is the best way to kind of go about it. If you're going to spend 3K, it better be relevant to what you're running in that exact moment. And then right. anything that's going to be a freebie, let it be a card that either comp creates a deck style, play like Patriot does in my opinion, or be one that absolutely supplements five or 10 different decks that you could throw that card into. We both have those aspects in our lists just from completely different directions. Is there anything you want to throw out there as well of a, uh, Hey, if you're going to spend tokens, know this. I think you got it down pat on the know this, but I definitely want to give a little bit more. Uh, um, uh, I, I, if you don't have Sarah, when I, when he was saying, Sarah, I, 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 it was almost like low hanging fruit. Get yourself a Sarah. It that is such yeah. Sarah is a goddess. Okay, 
um, allows you for so much more flexibility on a turn six, allows you so get yourself a serif. You don't. I think that should have been at least your number one, number two on that part of the list. Besides that, I think guest you you had you hit the nail on the head spot on with a lot of these. Um and I think high evolutionary is just gonna be that monstrous. That's all I that's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> Spend I think wisely, high evolutionary is yeah gonna be one that if you're a free to play player is and you have any series three down is going to be a very fun card. But last question for you. You've yep. got 12,000 tokens in your account yep. right now. Sure. And you can purchase any of the cards between now and May for 6K. At 6K or 3K, with knowing that you're going to have to wait. Whatever it is. You've got 12K in tokens. What are you spending them on? Uh, I think we already know I'm getting high evolutionary. Uh, okay. Oh, that's a good one, man. That's a good. I try. This is why I don't tell you what we're going to talk about uh, always. I, I like throwing you off, man. You got 6K to spend. Okay. Okay. High Left. evolutionary, numero uno. Yeah. <clears throat> Considering what I have, I already have Master Mold. I already have Negasonic. Uh, I, I've already got Ghost. I've already, you know. Like, I've got Nimrod. Ooh, that's hard because, like, like I'm going to wait two days on Howard the Duck, do my due diligence. I also am looking at Stegron and Snowguard. I'm looking at okay. Stegron and Snowguard. The reason why is because Snowguard uh, can do some things that I might feel is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> nobody else is going to get her uh, and Stegron because I love the ability to say you know what that little shit that you just put onto me like like that little Cosmo or that little whatever get that shit out of here I want that shit Stegron um, yeah. I think is going to have a lot a lot of utility for me uh, remember I, like this is all subject to change I'm weird guys I am here to gain your cubes with something that is out of left field, that's the surprise, the aha, the gotcha, is when we can, you know, really capitalize on that value. So I'm probably going to say Stegron for right now. Okay. So high evolutionary and Stegron. and Stegron. All right. If I'm spending 12K right now, in my own personal account, Yes. It's going to be probably High Evolutionary and uh, Howard the Duck. Howard the, um, I knew you were I'm back say and forth. I'm back and it. forth between Howard the Duck or spending in May on both Kitty Pride and Negasonic Teenage Warhead because it's just a lot of really good value at 6K there. A lot. But that's yeah. a little bit up left to be seen because a lot of Kitty Pride is we think will be good, but we're not sure 100% yet. So we need to see, which is why I'm a little bit on the fence. Like, I know she'll be good. I just don't know how good. I think she'll be better than Ghost Spider. I'll say that pretty confidently. <laughs> I don't think it's another Ghost Spider situation where we're all like, oh, my God. Ah, oh, one. And, and then it just gets shit on by the entire community. I don't think it's going to be that. <laughs> Nor do I, do I think that's going to be the case with Howard the Duck. Because you know, 6K for a one cost, it better be a damn good one cost. And I think that he is. Oh. Um, if I yes. didn't have any of these, if I didn't have any, like, Series 4, Series 5, like, open, everything is up for grabs, I would honestly say probably Silver Surfer, Zabu, and Thanos. Because if you don't have any of them by now and you've spent nothing, those three cards create so many decks all by themselves that they warrant getting into your roster faster. If you were just gifted 12,000 tokens, here you go. You know, even though Silver Surfer is about to drop, I would do it right away. But Zabu Ooh. especially at 3K, I would absolutely do it right away. If I had none of them at my disposal, none of them whatsoever, I would do that because I can make cases for cards that are coming down the pipeline. But if I have absolutely nothing and I've had absolute crap pulls, 
you underestimate how nice it is to have them when you do. And when you don't and you constantly lose to them, you realize how important they are as, okay, I've got this in my utility belt. And I think those three cards are great utility cards. That's one. If I'm going, if I did not have, if I am almost pull three complete and yep. I had 6K gifted to me or 12K, whatever. Yep. It's very easy for me. Very easy. I'm not going, I'm not deviating from high evolutionary for six. Right. And if I didn't have a Luke Cage hazmat. <laughs> well, buy those, those are your free pulls. Those are series three. Those are series I know, three. They're both pulls. Just... They're the free month ah! pulls. I know. I know. You love that. Love that combo too damn much. But I think you're just going to be a step ahead. I just think you're going to be a step it's ahead. That's all. So I, I think you're on a r- really solid track with that. Um, collectors yeah, tokens. I mean, <sighs> As much as the system needs to improve when it comes to rate of acquisition and method of acquisition, I think a lot is also going to come from seeing what is relevant in Conquest and seeing how different Conquest play is going to be versus tournament play when there's different stakes. Because on a tournament, once you're out, you're out and didn't cost you anything. But losing out on potential tickets that could promote you in ranks. I think that knowing which cards are coming down the pipeline, like Howard the Duck is going to give you, it, it just has so much value to it right now. So I appreciate it. I, I think you're absolutely dead on point with a lot of these. If you all have any questions, please reach out to us on Twitch, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Discord, on YouTube, on D, all of the above. Yes. This one was a fun one. I didn't expect this one to actually go as well as it did. I, I, I don't like to think I have bad ideas, but I'd like to think this one was just kind of, let's see what happens. But I appreciate this one. Uh, I, I love this one. This is we probably needed the, We needed this one, favorite. though, going into this week. We, and I think the, hopefully the community re- recognizes it, too. So, Camden, you have any final words, my friend? You already know. Becky, I love you, and I'm so sorry for the. Oh, She's so sorry, not real. <laughs> She's real to me, damn it. <laughs> and she's beautiful. Uh, Becky. Uh, all right, my name's Just Camden. go buy her a bracelet. <laughs> if you did not like this episode, my name is not Camden. I am Guest Gaming. <laughs> Peace, Asshole. love, and corn grease. <laughs> uh, have a great afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. I don't even know how to say goodbye at that. You suck. <laughs> uh, you turd. Ta-da!